Legion, Season 2, Episode 11, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 19. Another episode of Love Spoilers for every X-Men live-action thing, up to and including this episode. The episode is rated TVMA, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah. Um, love the big fight between the two, you know, between Farouk and David. I really appreciate the decision to make it this 2D animation. You know, I've talked previously about how the the CG on the show just isn't always quite completely convincing. So I quite appreciate that. And it does also feel, you know, these are based on comic books, which is, you know, yeah, 2D you know, and until then, and until now, they've been like 2D or not 2D, not 2D. And the, yeah, just some great turns in the in the fight. I I like when Farouk changes into Sid to to psych out David. And the 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 nullifier or whatever they called it, the the big you know, thing, I quite appreciate that, you know, yeah, it landed a bit far away, but, you know, Lenny shooting it did make it, you know, affect their powers just long enough that David could get back out of the bad situation, and, yeah, you know, afterwards, when he is, like, beating Farouk, you know, and he, he intends to beat him to death, yeah, you know, that it really is making Sid's point. You know, this, like, you could understand if he maybe, like, used his psychic powers to make sure that he couldn't fight back and then waited for the Vermilion, which, you know, he already knows they're on their way. He asked, you know, he, he, su he suggested Clark bring them. You know, and, yeah, just really excellent scene. Um, Rachel Keller continues to just really knock it out the park. The way she emphasizes, you know, she says something, you, know, you lied to me. Like, you know, it it's, it's painful, but it has to come out kind of thing. And let's see, the... the yeah, and, and, you know, she's like, you haven't had a lot of girlfriends. When a girl says, you know, when, you're, when your girlfriend tells you you need to talk, you talk. And, let's see, the... Uh, right, uh, also during the fight, at one point, I forget which of them, but either Farouk or David... You know, tr yeah, transforms into like a, a military vehicle. I guess they did briefly identify as an attack helicopter. Were people making that joke back then? 2018. Right, right. The joke had been made for about 4,000 years by then. Let's see. And the. Um, I'd like to think that if they were intentionally making a joke about that on the show, that they're siding with the trans people and trans allies and not the transphobes. Anyway, the... Um, there's a pretty decent chance they weren't making that joke. Anyway, yes. Um, the... Yeah, you know, Sid ends up shooting... You know, f firing her gun at David. And then we skip three years ahead and we get this, like, grainy footage. Like, it's like... And, a, you know, a documentarian or a news person or something went out to talk to, to the, you know, and, and they're, in the, they're in the ice cube, they're in the, you know, the, the liminal space that was created. And they talk about, you know, the various things and, yeah, when, you know, at one point Oliver says, you know, the world ended. And and Melanie's like, don't be so dramatic. They're not gonna... The world didn't end. Is, you know, there's this and this, except not. You know, and it is this thing because they're they're doing that thing like 
it seemed like for a while words come out just fine, but then at the end of the sentence, suddenly out comes the wrong strawberry. You know, yeah, I, I don't know. It's possible that I'm wrong, but I do like to think that that's a reference to Monty Python's Flying Circus. But the, yeah, you know, every so often they'll say something that's like, that doesn't, you know, we keep, we, we just kept losing so much hair. Time, we kept, time was what we kept losing, you know. Uh, we've been in here for like an hour? No, no, not an hour. Soup? No, no, we've been here longer than soup. So it is like, wait, did, did you know, what exactly did David do? Because there is a, yeah, did not mean for the alliteration. There is a pretty decent chance that he did do significant damage. David did do damage. And the, let's see, the, yeah, I, of course we miss our friends. Yeah, like, Glass McLab coat and the the girl who's always kicking kicking everybody. I would love to hear the rest of of Oliver's like suggestions for for nicknames. And let's see the yeah, and we go back to the the present day and we see that Lenny. Holy crap! That was a crack shot manages to take out Sid's bullet in midair and you know it, it knocks down David and Sid and then David you know uses his powers on Sid you know the the there's the the right yeah it's yeah as per usual for reason ones this is slightly out of order we have this scene where three Davids talk and you know, the second David that appears is identified by the subtitles as Divad, so David, you know, backwards, and the third one is DVD, so David without any vowels. And, yeah, like this, this conversation that they have, you know, yeah, you can understand, you know, th and this is the kind of paranoia that, that comes from this isolation, you know, for years, I, yeah, essentially his whole life he's been isolated, you know, so yeah, he ends up talking to himself, and I was wondering a little bit if, because it has been a little, there's been little bits in this season where sometimes he argues with himself in, you know, nar narration, in voiceover, you know, but it has been a little bit since they went into, because from what I understand, in the comic, he does have schizophrenia and or DID, and they hadn't really gone that much into that. Like, there were hints of that in season one. But then for a while, they were like, no, no, he never had a mental illness. It was the yellow-eyed devil that, you know, made him see things and, and such. And, and hearing voices, that was just the telepathy. Uh, let's see, but but yeah, you know, by the end of the episode, Sid, Sid Sid points out, you know, you drugged me and you raped me, you know, and and I do appreciate because in one of the first episodes, possibly the first episode, there's a very early episode where he does violate her consent, and in that it's like caressing her or kissing her. It's been a little while since I watched that, and I only watched it the one time, but. You know, that was a, you know, yeah, of, uh, that was a consent violation, and this is, you know, if you, if you continue to violate consent, you end up with rape. And, let's see, and, and, you know, he even says, but I need you, you know, so it's about what he needs, not about what she deserves. And, let's see, the... Yeah, uh, we have um, Carrie with a C discovering, you know, the, the, did he say betre, tre treason, I think, treachery, something like that, you know, and I do appreciate, you know, Carrie with a K being like, you look ridiculous, which, I mean, 
even for this show, yeah, right now, Carrie looks ridiculous with the big, you know, and I love, you know, he just gets the word, treachery, you know, he, he takes up the mask, treachery, and then it drops down again, you know, looking like the welder's mask, and he's got all these wires, just, yeah. Um, right, and I like her talking about, you know, you know I decapitated a minotaur, right? Yes, you told me, in graphic detail. Do you know what its blood smell like? Can we not do this? You know those beef bullions we used to have as kids? That's what it smelled like. That wasn't what it tasted like, though. It was, wow. Just, yeah. The girl who'd always kick kick everyone and then taste the blood of mythological creatures? I also quite liked, you know, early in the episode when, you know, Sid is like, you know, I, I think I just need some, some time by myself. This this was a lot on me, and, and Kim's like, yeah, we we killed a minotaur. <laughs> Let's see, and the uh, right, I liked um, David confronting Farouk, and also the the you know the crown of thorns that they put him. This is going to hurt. I appreciate he said, you know, I mean, this is his enemy, but he's still he's a scientist, so he's going to inform about you know. And the, yeah, you know, he's walking, Farouk is walking in the cell, and there's, like, these four wire, wires or strings or something sticking out of the thing to, to keep him in check. And, and David tells him, if they don't take you out, I will, you know. Right, I also like when, when David goes up to Lenny and she's like, I'm heading her head to the chair, you know. And, and he's like, no, God has plans for you. I don't believe in God. I think you do. You know, nice little... Yeah. He's not talking about, like, Yahweh. He's talking about himself. You know. If he wants to, to be comparable to Yahweh, oof, you've got a lot of smiting left to do, my man. And the... Um, let's see... Right, I appreciate Farouk is like... No, I, I did try to, to... You know, I... I wanted you to love me. I wanted to take care of you, you know. And let's see. The yeah, the trial great little bit with, you know, wh where's Farouk? Oh, they're bringing him in in a minute. They they weren't lying, you know. He comes in about a minute later. It's just that the trial is no longer of Farouk, it's of David now. And yeah, the the you know, the energy field that they trap him in and, you know, yeah, they confront him with various things and the, yeah, they try to use gas, which is legitimately a clever, because, like, you know, he can, we've seen him stop bullets, so, you know, what, yeah, but, but gas, it's, you know, much more difficult to, and ultimately the it wasn't quite a good enough cage he manages to to break out i love the moment that carrie with a k she doesn't even hesitate she immediately puts herself between the the blast and and her allies and like she does the the secret service dive thing with you know so that they're as much out of harm's way as at all possible and let's see. Right, I like the um, the whole thing with the you know the the ship of fools and were those, as far as I could tell, the the not not title cards but like the the yeah you know it had the function of slides, but those were like printed on business cards or something or maybe I've just watched American Psycho too many times as if that were possible but yeah you know the the that really is just yeah and and yeah you know the truth is relative the truth is what nine wise men agree on while the tenth hangs you know and that is true like for you know I'd, I'd like to think that Today, we've maybe reached a point where, you know, we on the far left are, are right about most things, but 
for a lot of history, yeah, you know, like, you look back on it today, and I know conservatives are like, why can't we go back to that, you know, uh, Charlie Kirk just recently said that the only reason America shouldn't recolonize, I want to say it was Haiti, but it was, it was a country that, you know, was that he didn't think they would get anything out of it. He doesn't think there's anything wrong with colonizing. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, we look back at a lot of history, and it's like, how could they possibly think that was okay? And let's see. Yeah, you know, it ends with, yeah, David teleports to, to Lenny, frees her, stops the bullets, and they disappear and just yeah fantastic ending i love i i really don't think we have enough of these where an adaptation because it happens a bunch in the comics but too many of these adaptations are way too scared of actually having this sort of turn where a, a powerful hero becomes a powerful villain they're some of the most compelling stories in the comics so yeah so glad that they, you know, and then when they do them, they, they often completely botch them, like, last, the, the last stand where, you know, they make a complete mess of the Dark Phoenix saga. Now, let's see, so, yeah, um, IMDb Trivia points out, you know, the, the, the fight, of uh, at the beginning, for Shadows, David's heel turn. Previously, it's been indicated that safety is designated with red. Danger is designated with green. Switching from the initial indications. During the fight at the start, Farouk is red and David is green. And let's see them. So, the I'm just briefly going to let you know because this... You know, I'm doing these Marvel shows in the order in which they originally aired, which means that the very next show I do is Cloak and Dagger, Season 1. Then it is The Gifted, Season 2. Oh, all right. Uh, Cloak and Dagger, Season 1, which is 10 episodes. The Gifted, Season 2, which is 16 episodes. Cloak and Dagger Season 2, which is 10 episodes. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 6, 13 episodes. And then Legion Season 3, those 8 episodes. So yeah, it will be... Yeah, uh, what is that, a month and a half or so? Um, yeah, that's going to be a difficult wait. But in fairness, you know, back when this originally aired, you had to wait significantly longer. But yeah, um... Really, really looking forward to to season three. And um, yes. Yeah, so the last thing I want to say about this episode, um, I thought they did a really great job. You know, like throughout the episode, I was not sure if David was going to end up overcoming because he's confronted with it at the start like maybe five minutes in or so right after the fight Sid tells him you're the villain you're the one who ends the world and that's the thing when you're confronted with horrible you know a horrible realization about yourself you have the choice to you know try to try to look inward and try to figure out is this true and if so what can I do about it or to reject it. And the fact that Sid fires a gun at him, you know, he, that tells him that she was willing to kill him, but he also has a chance now because he did survive it because of Lenny. Yeah, you know, and, and he does spend the rest of the episode struggling with this. And it really is only at the very, very end that he completely embraces because he's still telling himself that he's doing... That, that it's the right thing to do when he is, you know, drugging Sid. Right, also really love the, the cover of, I think, is it just called Behind Blue Eyes? Didn't Limp Bizkit cover that? So, so yeah, this is a significantly less offensive cover than the Limp Bizkit one. 
Right, and I wanted to, to say something that's been brought up in these last couple of episodes. There are a number of young men who, you know, yeah, when, it, when I was younger, I, you know, yeah, the, the infamous locker room talk. You know, there were, there were times where I spent more time around other guys than around women. And, yeah, just some of the ridiculous stuff that they would brag about, like, stuff that they would never want the, the women in their lives to find out about. And, yeah, you know, a, a lot of young men, you know, there is a, a fear that the, the at least their, their female partner, you know, I, I yeah, for the, for the straight ones, that they would, you know, yeah, they, they fear their female partner realizing the kinds of things they say behind their back and sometimes also the things they do and I felt like this these last couple of episodes did a great job like exploring that because it really is like some of the things that David did you know when he didn't think Sid would see yeah and yeah what do we do now now we pray